most people alive today will work until they die. With high inflation and a suddenly shaky banking system, some Americans are cashing out their retirement funds. All the things we would like our retirement system to be doing, it is doing. Retirement so. is the career professional's promised land. Study hard at school, get a good job, work hard your entire life, live within your means, invest diligently, and you will be rewarded with endless free time in your final years. It's not much to ask for, but to most people alive today, it will only ever be a dream. A bank rate survey found that 55% of Americans are behind on their retirement savings and 10% don't even know where their retirement savings stand. What's happening in the stock market, what's happening with inflation, um, even worries about taxation, it's really set me back. Like most things are with personal finance, the numbers are even worse with young professionals. The National Institute on Retirement Security reports that 66% of working millennials have nothing save for retirement. Even though two-thirds of millennials work for an employer that offers a retirement plan, only about one-third participate in the offer. Oh. Oh, that is bad news. Millennials are between the ages of 27 and 42. Many people in this group are at the peak of their careers, so these reports can't be attributed simply to young people just starting out in their financial lives. But who can blame them? The financial firm Fidelity recommends that you should have at least the equivalent of your annual salary saved by the age of 30, three times your salary at the age of 40, and six times your salary by 50 to be on track for retirement. I like to think that I am personally pretty good with my money. I have come from a career at an investment bank where I was earning a lot more than the average person my age and I still got nowhere near these numbers. A higher income does mean the goals are higher since this is based on multiples of your income, but it's easier to save when you earn more too. If you are actually on track with these numbers, I am genuinely very impressed. Let me know in a totally unverifiable comment in the comment section and I will give you an equally worthless love heart reaction. But most people are well behind Fidelity's recommendations. The NIRS found using the recommendations of financial experts that only 5% of working millennials are saving adequately for retirement and everybody else is probably going to be working until they die. I feel like right now I could be spending on a, a lot more important things, you know, gas, because it's so expensive, um, school that's coming up for me. So I don't think retirement's what I need to be worried about right now. There are three big reasons for these alarming statistics. The first reason is all of the obvious stuff. Inflation is at a three-decade high. Millennials started their careers after the worst financial crash in a century, the cost of college is increasing eight times faster than wages, most young graduates are leaving school with five-figure debt before they even start working, renting even a one-bedroom apartment is now unaffordable everywhere in the country for someone earning a minimum wage, and saving for a house is almost impossible in the expensive cities with good job opportunities. A New Yorker with a college degree would need to commit to 7.5 years of dedicated saving to have enough to make a down payment on an entry-level apartment. That dedicated saving can only start after they pay off their student loans, which now on average takes 20 years. After they buy the entry-level apartment, they then have a 30-year mortgage to pay off. If this person started working at 22, they would be 79 years old before they were a debt-free homeowner in New York in an ideal scenario. Variables like starting a family, getting sick, or earning less than the average college graduate would put them even further behind. And that's just reason one. So it's time to learn how money works to find out why you will be working until you die. This week's lesson was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes. But did you know that Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? Skillshare fosters novel career opportunities by aligning with your personal learning path. Conventional jobs don't cater to everyone's needs. Skillshare offers tailored classes to assist you in embarking on your new professional voyage. I recently completed a class called Building a Creative Career. As an individual already immersed in a creative profession, I not only endorse this class, but also admit to acquiring new insights from it. This is just one example of a career-oriented class from Skillshare that you can take to help you jumpstart your next job. Start your learning journey today with Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my viewers to join through the link in the description will get one month free of Skillshare so you can achieve your new career goals this year. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The second reason why most people will be working until they die is that people either don't care or don't want to think about it. As humans, we are great at putting off problems that we don't want to deal with, and retirement is one of those problems. Most personal finance experts, and even people pretending to be personal finance experts on the internet, will tell you that the most important time to start planning for retirement is your early 20s as soon as you get started with a professional job. Ideally, you can even get started before that by working part-time through college so that you don't start out your professional career with too much debt. 
On paper, this all makes sense. If someone is hoping to have a 30-year retirement after they end their career, and they want to live on $50,000 a year during that time, they would need approximately $1 million in well-invested assets to generate that income, assuming that market returns are roughly the same as they have been over the past 100 years. That return would be about 10% per year on average, but after tax and inflation, 10% returns turn into roughly 4% returns. Someone planning to only live on retirement can afford to spend more than they earn from their returns, because they can use some of their principal every year since they aren't going to need it when they are dead. People planning on a longer retirement by quitting their jobs earlier in life often subscribe to the 4% rule, which is based on a Trinity study which found that if someone only spent 4% of their portfolio's value every year, it should last indefinitely, with investment returns replacing living expenses. But we are not talking about overachievers. We are just talking about the average person that wants to fund an average retirement. At $50,000, dollars a year is what most people would need to be comfortable and enjoy life in their twilight years. Starting at 20 years old, with a target retirement age of 65, someone would need to invest $100 a month until they retired to reach that target. If they wait until 30 years old, they would have to invest almost $300 a month, triple what they would have if they started at 20. If they wait until they are 40, they have to invest $800 a month. $800 a month for some people might be possible, but someone with that much disposable income also likely wouldn't be satisfied with $50,000 a year to live off in retirement. I'm golden, baby. You can't do anything with five, Greg. Five's a nightmare. Is it? Oh, yeah. Can't retire. Not worth it to work. Oh, yes. Five will drive you un poco loco, my fine feathered friend. Starting early is clearly important, but making sacrifices now for something in 45 years' time just goes against basic human nature. It's not that irrational either. 20% of Americans don't even live until they are 60, and many more would be too sick by that time in their lives to really enjoy themselves regardless of how much they have saved. Seeing the world and going out with friends in your 20s is worth a lot more to most people than having a really nice room in a senior living facility. Life is not guaranteed, and money spent on life experiences is rarely regretted. Young people are traveling overseas at much higher rates than people from generations before. 74% of millennials surveyed said that they never expect to be able to afford a home, and since they have nothing to save for, they would rather spend the money on experiences instead. Some money to spare. When the economy's not growing, when wages aren't growing, people aren't thinking 50 years down the road, they're thinking, how do I stay in my home right now? Some people would call this behavior irresponsible, and a young person's YOLO attitude may not be so cavalier when they are still behind a desk at 70. But there are other risks to planning for retirement that a lot of personal finance puritans don't account for. The word on the street amongst financial analysts is that market returns over the past century were higher than we can expect in the future. They are often wrong about these sorts of things, but there is still no guarantee that sticking to a retirement savings plan will net you the results you are expecting when basing your calculations off past performance. So even if you are part of the 80% that don't die and the 60% that are still healthy enough to enjoy an active retirement, there is a risk that your nest egg won't be enough to support the life that you thought you would be living in your retirement anyway. If the goal of money is to maximize fulfillment in your life, then spending money now might be the safer investment. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, why can't people just do both? That's a good question. But the answer is that a lot of people just don't have enough money. It's hard to save, like, in general, let alone for past a house and a savings account for emergencies. There are certainly people that spend on things that are a complete waste of money, but millennials and younger generations are by and large more financially conscious than older generations. They know what they are spending their money on. They are just choosing different objectives. $100 a month after taxes could be all someone earning $50,000 a year has after covering their essential spending. Choosing a $1,200 summer vacation every year at that point isn't reckless spending. It's just choosing to live life. And yes, a lot of people don't even save up for these expenses. A lending tree survey found that more than a third of people incurred vacation debt last year alone, averaging $1,249, almost exactly how much money the average 20-year-old would need to save to have a comfortable retirement at 65. The third reason that you will be working until you die is that even if you do choose to make sacrifices to save for retirement, you will probably mess it up anyway. The market may have returned an average of 10% per year over the past 100 years, but the average investor has only achieved a return of 4.25% in the same time according to research by Dalbar Inc. The first mistake people made was buying high and selling low as they bought into hyped up positions. Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF has generated similar returns to the S&P 500 since its inception, but it has been a 
net destroyer of wealth because most people bought into the fund when it was outperforming the market by a considerable margin. Kathy only made it into morning news segments after her fund had generated these returns, so most people only learned about ARK Invest as it was trading around its all-time high. I think the Kathy Wood is the kiss of death. The Innovation ETF was just an index of other companies that were also overhyped that a lot of people bought into after hearing about people turning small investments into millions of dollars. This goes back into human nature and the fear of missing out. If someone is getting rich doing something, we don't want to be left out. People also enjoy being part of it, even if it's just an investment trend. I pick on Meet Kevin a lot on this channel, but his viewership dropped significantly after he announced that he was selling the investments that he spent years hyping up. Those investments were very profitable for him, but people just weren't as interested in watching his content after he stopped reaffirming their beliefs that they were going to get rich buying his recommended investments based off terrible financial analysis. There is also an element of desperation in pursuing outsized investment gains. A lot of young people realize that they will never buy a house or even retire if they do everything right. So taking a risk on something that people on the internet are saying made them rich is worth a try. It's a lottery ticket that could cost thousands of dollars. For the same reason, people also try investing strategies like day trading, which investing gurus tell them could generate returns as high as $1,000 a day, but really, they are much more likely to lose all of their money. Fraud also hurts average investors a lot more than they realize. A lot of people trying to invest use services like FTX to gain exposure to cryptocurrency markets that were exactly the type of risky asset that could make people rich overnight. Those investors are unlikely to get their money back and could have lost a significant portion of their portfolio, which puts them behind financially, but also makes them more likely to say fuck it and give up on saving for retirement like the people in Reason 2. Another reason that people suck at investing is because they invest too much. Now, don't call me crazy just yet. But if you are investing as much as you possibly can into your portfolio, then you will find it hard to cover big expenses as they occur without selling off some of your investments. Unexpected expenses like being laid off work often coincide with down markets, which means you will be forced to sell your stocks at lows after purchasing them at highs. Normal people also get scared. Everybody talks a big game about long-term investing until they see their portfolio down by 20% in a week. The little voice telling you to cash out and reinvest once the market has bottomed is very hard to ignore. Some people listen to this voice, and most of them miss the bottom and end up buying back at a higher price than they sold at to save their account in the first place. The final reason that people can't invest for retirement properly is that it's boring and slow. Most of you can't sit through a 60 second TikTok unless there is a separate screen of Subway Surfer or Minecraft Parkour playing in the background. Dollar cost averaging money into a retirement account for 45 years is a long commitment. And as the money piles up, it gets harder and harder to say no to all of the things that money could be doing instead of saving for a day you might be dead before. Whatever the reason for the average investor's terrible performance, it changes the retirement math a lot. To have the same $50,000 retirement income after taxes and inflation, someone getting a return of 4.25% would need $2.5 million in investments outside of their primary residence. Saving $2.5 million is also a lot harder with lower returns. If someone made market returns and started saving for retirement at 20 years old, they should only need to save $100 a month, which is not as easy as it sounds, but with some discipline, can easily be done by most people. But using these more realistic numbers, they would need to save $1,500 a month or $18,000 a year, which is not possible for someone earning $50,000 a year, and anybody earning more than that would have to be willing to spend a lot less in retirement than they did while they were working. There is a fourth reason that you will never retire, and that's because the 40-year career and the financial security it provides no longer exists. But that may not be a bad thing. To find out why, go and watch my video on how careers have changed forever. And if you know you are never going to retire, you should buy something from the I'm only here because I can't afford to quit collection off my new merch shop. Your managers will love it, and it makes it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works. Point is, the best advice most experts can give you is to do five things. Number one, start saving now. In fact, start saving 10 years ago. Invent a time machine, use it to go back, and start saving money. 